Yes, there is. Pay attention. It, it, it's up. It's down. There's polarity. It just changes a lot. Now, if we plug it back in, everything's safe and clear. Now, we won't get an arc here, and we will get an arc over there. Nothing. We get an arc on the case, so it is hot. Now, if I go over here, we get an arc, and it's a big, beautiful arc. Look at that. 120 milliamps of raw surging energy. Raw! At the speed of a coulomb. Yes, it's very mighty. It's very manly. Now, unplug, safe. Everything is good. Ah, if you need to hook up, say, another NST, you just do the exact same thing again. You, because now you know these two are in phase. So you grab your next NST, you slide it over, and these are both the exact same transformers, so it'd be pretty obvious that it'd be straight across. And you phase this one and get it where you want it, and then you do the next and the next. And the only limit to how many of these you can hook together is how many amps your wall power supply can feed. I mean, you could, you could have a thousand of these in a row. And if you're really good, you can actually have, you can have one plug that goes to the first bank of three or four, another separate plug off another separate circuit going to another bank, and you could have pole pig power with NSTs. It can be done. People have done it. I mean, I've, the biggest I've ever done, I think, was seven. We had, uh, back around 2001, we had seven of these in a row. But that's the basics of it. That's how to phase NSTs. Now some basic safety that you need to know. Because we see, we, you know, we're on the internet. We watch YouTube. And those of us who have been playing with this stuff for a few years, we get on there and we see these kids that are like 15 years old playing with 10 kVA pole pigs in their garage and they have no idea what they're doing. Start with NSTs. Please, guys, for the love of God, play with NSTs because the pole pigs are insanely dangerous. Just, I mean, even, even stuff that looks relatively safe, like these. This is a MOT, a microwave oven transformer, MOT. These are nasty little bastards. Okay, they're not current limited. They are kind of, yeah, I know they got shunts in them, but effectively, they're not current limited. And the fact that the voltage is low kind of tricks people into thinking they're safer than they really are because they don't have big high voltage bushings on them. I mean, you can see there's a, the low voltage winding there and high voltage winding here, and the output is just a little spade terminal, and then it's center grounded. But these things will kill you. There's, there's easily enough current in one of these things to really mess you up. So until you know what you're doing, these aren't for noobs. Okay? These, these are great. You can put them in four packs and six packs under oil, rock out, have like a little mini pig. Cool. They're good. And if you want to learn about them, you know, write in. We'll do videos on them. But start with NSTs. They're ubiquitous. They're, they're simple. They're safe. I mean, even if you have to buy one, they're only like 100 bucks. It's not a big deal. Now, NSTs only put out 60 milliamps at most. You'll find rare ones that are up higher. You get into the cold cathode stuff. But as a rule, 60 milliamps is the biggest you're going to find. Some things you need to know. If stuff is hot, put a hand in your pocket. Okay? There's pretty much no reason you should ever have to work on one of these hot, ever. But when stuff's hot, put a hand in your pocket. Because if you touch something hot that's fed off this, and it goes in your hand, you're going to go, ow! And you're going to remember it, and you're going to cry like a little girl, and you might pee down your leg a little bit, and your mom's going to come around down going, you okay? And everybody will make fun of you. But if you do it with two hands, and you reach out and go, Bzz, then it doesn't go in your arm and down and out your foot. It goes up your arm and across your heart and out the other side. And you know those guys on the table that they go, Cliff! Yeah, yeah, you'll do that. The whole porpoise thing off the table, you'll do that. Don't do that because usually you only get to do that once. If you're working on this stuff and you're hanging out you know, in your garage or in your basement workshop or whatnot, have a buddy around. Okay, whenever you're playing with high voltage, have a buddy around. It's, I mean, even if it's just somebody to hang out and you know, get Mountain Dew out of the fridge, have a buddy around. You'll live longer, especially when you start playing with the big stuff. There's a million more safety things I could touch on, but those are the ones I really, really wanted to hit you guys with up front. Um, we're going to do a video dedicated to safety. In the meantime, for your homework project, I want you to go to pupman.com, P-U-P-M-A-N.com. Pupman is a fabulous resource if you're into learning about Tesla coils. These guys are awesome. They, the absolute cutting, bleeding edge of Tesla coil technology happens on Pupman. 
This is 1,500 guys who are the absolute state of the art. It's filled with some of the most amazing, patient, brilliant engineers you will ever meet in your life. You will meet people on there that you will be friends with for the rest of your life. They're awesome guys. Go there. Use it. Um, the Geek Group, of course, is another great resource, and a lot of people on Pupman are members of the Geek Group. Um, membership in both is free. If you're not a member of the Geek Group, you should be. Go to www.thegeekgroup.org. Check us out. Fill out a Become a Member thing. Sign up. Get involved. Get in forums. Have fun. Get girls. It's cool like that. Um, but go to Pupman, and they have a safety fact. And it's right here. I printed it out. Okay, because I cheat. They, they've got really good data here, and I pull some notes off it. Um, it's at pupman.com forward slash safety dot htm. Go there. Read every single word. Some of it's wrong. Some of it, like, is a little outdated. The stuff on skin effect, yeah, it's kind of hinky. But we'll cover that in, a, in one, of our coming up, one, one of our upcoming videos, and we'll go into the details on, on how safety works and all that jazz. Something just occurred to me. When I hooked those up and, and phased them, I didn't... Look at me trying to pick it up by the high-voltage bushings. <laughs> when I hooked these up, I didn't actually get 120 milliamp arc because I never connected them together. I can't cheat people like that. I'm going to have 50 people writing in being like, that was a 120 milliamp spark. They weren't actually connected together. You're an idiot. You don't know anything about high voltage. I'm in front of two different cameras right now. Shut up, okay? I'm a little distracted. So here, we'll do it. We'll make you an actual 120 milliamp arc so that you can see the difference. And then, then we'll do some really slick editing. And uh, we'll, we'll make a, uh, a single arc. I, don't, I just connected the front. I didn't do the back. A lot better if I had my probe, wouldn't it? I got the cup. Da, da, da. Uh, uh. I'll do it on this side. I got washers over here. It makes it easier. But we'll uh, we'll do some nifty editing showing the the first spark and the second spark, and you can see the difference. But let's talk a little bit about volts and amps. Now this is hot right now. Now volts are what make the jump the the spark jump farther when it first starts. So. To get two things to arc at 20,000 volts, they've got to be this far apart. But at 50,000 volts, you can bring them in and boom, they go about here. Okay, so that's voltage. Voltage is the push. Voltage is potential difference. Now, amperage is the oomph. If you think of it like water in a pipe, voltage is the pressure, so how far the hose will shoot. Amperage is the current. It's the volume. It's how much water is moving through the hose in X amount of time. So... We've got 12,000 volts, so if I, if I bring this in, we'll do it up front so you can see it. Now, I'll come in from the side. Now, that's the little Wheatley 60 amp, or 60 milliamp arc. And I can pull it out about an inch, and it dies, okay? So now I'm going to disconnect this. Safety, cool. And I'm going to connect both of these transformers together. And we'll go from 60 milliamps up because in arcs, how many amps you have equates out, when you're dealing with arcs and sparks, to how far you can draw the arc out. Now, high voltage sparks are loud, crackly, bristly arcs, like a Tesla coil. High current arcs are fiery, thick, hissy arcs. Now, watch this. That will do it right there. See how I can drag that out about twice as far now? We'll try it right off the electrode. It's hard to see. Isn't that great? Look at that. And it's so hot, it's melting my wire. That's fabulous. I'll we'll disconnect that. Safe. We're good. So, yeah. That's how to phase an NST and some basics on high voltage safety. If you guys have any questions, write them in to info at thegeekgroup.org. Um, check out thegeekgroup.org. Be a member. Hang out. Meet girls. Meet other weirdo science guys like us. And yeah, come on down to the lab sometime and play because this is what we do. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. I'll talk to you later. We're going to get back to work. See ya.